Yeah, I hear some uh, some people, some photographers saying that we cannot change the world with photography, you know? and it's true. I mean, we cannot change the world, but you can change the like, small things inside the, the world, and you can change this. I, I I have this experience in my in my career, so I really believe in that. To be a photographer is a is a way of life, and it's a way of fight also. I like people like James Natway and that he says that a, a, a photographer that covers conflict, it's an anti-war photographer, right? So that's a, some, somebody who understands what, what we are doing and is really strict with, uh, with his uh, ethics, right? And for me, I feel that I'm helping in shooting photos. You are, you are bringing this uh, reality to, to, the, to the Western world, you know, to, the, to the media. And sometimes also you can help, like physically you can you can help, you can give a hand to somebody. And but what I think that is really important is that you are really conscious of what is important of our work and to keep always like a straight line of work, like what I, why we are doing that and and what we want to do with that and all these things because if not you can maybe lose the the sense of, of the profession, right? The first one was about the immigration. I was working in that from 2003 until 2006. And yeah, it was really, really intense uh, moments, um, especially in the Sahara. So I was shooting immigrants from the Western Africa, like especially Malians. Yeah, they were trying to come to Europe and they were taking the boats to, to, come, to go to the Canary Islands at that time. I was uh, based in Fort Aventura, in one of the Canary Islands. And I was kind of like the immigration correspondent for AFP. So what I was doing is uh, I was traveling to some of these countries for like two, three weeks and going back to Canary Islands and two, three weeks. Because at the time there was a lot of immigrants arriving to Canary Islands. So we were covering both sides, like people arriving and people crossing the desert. Yeah, I remember one especially that was um, a group of immigrants in a boat in the middle of the, of the sea and you can see the immigrants sailing in the boat and with a lot of rain and you can see perfectly the, the expression of their faces and how they are fighting in the, the boat to, to get to, to mainland and I was in another boat with a fisherman boat and we were following them and, and shooting the photos and that was a really, yeah, really uh, intense moment I remember that one it was this boat arrived okay to the to the to the shore, but it was another boat the same day at capsized, and it was seven people drawn. That was a really strong, uh, like a strong experience, especially because it was really um, stupid. Why why they lost their life? I mean, wars we have for all the history of the humans, right? But these things about passports and being illegal immigrant is something really new. It's only for like two centuries or a century and a half. And, and the second one it was it was Gaza. Gaza is this kind of places where before you go there you, you you think that people will hate you when you arrive there and you think that everybody's a terrorist there and everybody is shooting to everybody and and when you arrive there people are amazing and during the big operation from Israel in two thousand before right before the, the, the Lebanon war in two thousand six and they closed all the Gaza Strip for, for like four or five months. They were bombing everywhere and it was a big massacre. And it was one day and there was a big funeral with a bunch of people killed. And I remember perfectly the, the image there also of some of a of woman crying in a morgue. And it was a really intense moment also. And yeah, so I spent there like almost a year living there and I really enjoyed it. I have so much friends there and I still have them. And people are really nice. I mean, they are the same as we, we are. I mean, they just want the best for their families, right? And all the rest is just politics. When I started as, as a photographer, uh, I was really connected with the people that I was uh, photographing. And it was like uh, at least two or three months in every place. And I think I, I lost a little bit of uh, this, um, the meaning of why I was a photographer, why, why I'm a photographer, when I was shooting for wires, because I was changing really quickly from one place to each other to, to other and like two weeks here, two weeks there and not really understanding what, what I was shooting photos of. 
and that's one of the reasons why I start to decide to, to, to quick from the, from the wires. Because first, because it was really stressing, and second, because I, I like also this uh, understanding the places where I am, right? And you go to a place, you spend two weeks walking around just, with, even without camera, just meeting people and, and seeing what's going on. And then you start to shoot photos and you start to understand the country. And, and after three or four months, you understand a little bit, maybe the, the five percent of what's going on in the country. But then you start to have ideas. And, and yeah, I think it's very important. This. Yeah, I started last year in the 13th of January, the day before that uh, Benali Falls in Tunisia. So I flew there to Tunisia with, with the help of a friend. I went there, I was covering the revolution in Tunis for like a month, and then I would fly to Cairo and I was covering the revolution in Cairo. And then I started to get more assignments from the New York Times and I went to, to Libya, and then September to, to Yemen, and I was in Yemen for four months. Because I think, for example, Libya was really different than Cairo or Yemen from Tunisia. No? It was a really different experience. But somehow, all of them they are connected. No, it was all, this, all, all of these people that wanted a change, a change in their country. Yeah, there is one that I really like that it's in Yemen, and it's in the main square where all the anti-government the, they come there in, in Chenchi Square. And every day at, at the sunset. And they make a, like a small ceremony with a song and everybody dance. So the song of the revolution in Germany was the, the, the Waka Waka of Shakira. I think I explained that before, but you can see every day people dancing Shakira, like even women wearing a cap and, and dancing Waka Waka of Shakira. And that's something that I never saw in any, in any media. And I, and I have these photos. You know? And the people was explaining me that this is the song of Shakira, they just, they just translated to, to Arabic. And, and it's this kind of experience that you make that you make connection with the people that you feel really connected with the people. For example, in Yemen, like 60 or 70 percent of the kids they were wearing Barcelona t-shirts, football club Barcelona t-shirts, and that's of course I'm from Barcelona. So when you see Yemeni is like with the Jambias and in you know, a demonstration and with the ten of Messi in the back in the t-shirts, so you get connected with them, right? And you can talk about football. So. Yeah, it's the kind of things that you don't see in the media most of the time. I think we are losing. It's not that what we photograph is not true, because it's true also, but I think we lose the other part, the half part of the story, right? That it's not only people shooting. People are shooting and fighting, but in, in their homes, they're people doing normal life, right? So I think we have to, we should, we, we should do this full picture of the, of the story. Like, for example, in Germany this year, I can't, I mean, I can't do a better thing than to shoot photos and to, to show reality. To, to, in this case, to the New York Times, right, and they, they, it had a big impact in the, in the media. And I think it's most of the times is the best way to, to to try to change things. And sometimes you can put your grain of sand to, to, to help a little bit to try to change some some things, right? And this is my opinion on why I'm doing that. But we don't have to to create also like a big atmosphere about the photographers that we work in that places because. It's not that important what we feel there because also, for example, I was four months in, in Yemen, but when I finished assignment, I took a plane and I went back to my home for holidays. But these people that I was photographing, they're still there. They are suffering now, still the repression from police. They are suffering the, the transition. So I don't think it's fair to put the focus on that. I think we have to keep the focus all the time there on these people.